Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech talking today about the state of modern. I tried to put together this video about two or three times last week, and I was actually really angry with Wizards at the time for kicking modern off of the Pro Tour. Yes, I've I calmed down come. since then, and I'm glad that I didn't publish this last week because I don't think the situation is as doom and gloom as I originally thought that it was. Yes. We look at the events over the next year, and the four Pro Tour events are all going to be standard with Booster Draft, which means that they're going to be a little less interesting for those of us who like non-rotating formats to watch. You're going to see less views on Twitch, you're going to see less long-term evergreen content, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. But Wizards did something else in this announcement, which is put Team Unified Modern at the center of the World Magic Cup. So the World Magic Cup is kind of the world championship at this point, and Team Unified Modern forces individuals to play with different cards than their teammates. Why did they do this? Wizards specifically said that they want to reward good drafting, innovative deck building, and tight gameplay in unestablished environments. Those are things that the pros should be able to do, but I see the pros as more well-rounded than just being able to play brand new formats. The second reason that they gave is really at the heart of it. They want to highlight the newest card set. What does Pro in Pro Tour stand for? It is the promotional tour. Many of us thought that it was the professional tour, but the idea behind the Pro Tour is to push sales of the new cards. Now, I know I'm being a little bit over the top here. Yes, it's supposed to be the professional tour, but this rebranding of the Pro Tour as standard only, brand new cards only, really pushes a different focus than being extremely good at several different magic formats to being able to solve the current format first. This is a little bit short-sighted from Wizards. It misses the long-term continuity of the game, something that individuals really like that are not pros. The ability to look back at cards and play those old cards in new interesting decks. The largest GP we've ever had, the largest collectible card game tournament we've ever had was related to the release of Modern Masters. The fact that Modern was on the Pro Tour at the time and that lots of people were trying to get Modern staples so they could qualify for and hopefully become a pro with Modern cards clearly contributed to the excitement and hype around this tournament. The other thing that Modern does is it creates content that is unique from standard content. Standard content has a life cycle of three to six months, maybe nine months at the absolute longest. Beyond that, it is just not relevant to future Magic players. You can gain something by going back and looking at old standard decks, but very, very few people do. In looking at the analytics on this YouTube channel, Modern, Legacy, and EDH blow away standard content over a 24-month period or beyond. The decks that don't rotate are much, much more interesting to people. If you leave the game for a few years and you come back to the game and see a deck archetype that you are slightly familiar with, with a new spin, with some new cards, it's much easier for you to connect with that as a fan. The reason that I am back playing Magic is because I walked into a card store and I saw people playing Magic, not Standard, which I couldn't relate to at the time. In fact, I didn't even know what a Planeswalker was when I came back in. It was EDH. I saw these old cards that I was familiar with from many years beforehand, from before I had quit Magic to dedicate myself full-time to school. And that nostalgia 
along with the new cards that were doing innovative things with those older cards is what brought me back into the game. Having this long-term narrative as part of the Pro Tour is going to be missed unless, and I'll get to this in the hopeful section at the end, the World Magic Cup focuses much more on modern. Many of us dream about being Pro Tour players. We also like watching Pro Tour players play decks that we own, that we are familiar with, that we believe that we understand. You can learn so much from watching a better player play your deck than watching a better player play a deck that you don't understand. If you've played 100 games of Modern with a deck and you watch a Pro Tour player play it, they've probably got a 1,000 or 2,000 games with that deck. And they can show you things, they can show you a depth to this game that you didn't even know existed. That ability to connect with pros is one of the things that helps people believe that the Pro Tour is obtainable to them and provides a different type of learning than it's solving the new standard format does. There are different ways to play this game. There's a diversity. And I understand that because of the reprint policy, we will never see Legacy or Vintage on the Pro Tour again. I would love to see some type of a cube draft that has those older cards as part of the cube as World Magic Cup or other major premier events for the top eight or top 16 or top 24. But modern gives us a very different way to play the game than standard, and it is a different skill that we should celebrate in professional players and reward those individuals who do well in modern. I understand that there's a lot of criticism from the pros over modern as a format. I don't believe this is the reason to toss modern as a format. This is the reason to improve modern. We all remember bad standard formats. Delver may have dominated horribly for a period of time. Jace and Stoneforge Mystic made for some miserable, grueling games also. But that didn't mean that we abandoned standard. It meant that we improved on standard. I just did the financial video for May, and I talked a lot about the price impact on Modern. I'm still recommending a 30-day cooling off period. I've seen a lot of people liquidating their Modern cards. I don't believe this is a good idea. Keep your play sets. But if you have extras of cards that are way overpriced, that are likely to see reprints in Eternal Masters or in the next Modern Masters set, I would get rid of those extras, especially things printed at rare, like the Fetchlands. The biggest impact that this announcement is going to have is that the price crash we normally see when standard sets rotate out is going to get worse, and standard is going to get more expensive. Since standard is the only format supported on the Pro Tour, individuals need standard cards to play in the Pro Tour. And most of the PPTQs, even though we're allowed to do other formats, are going to be either limited or standard. People want to play the format that the Pro Tour is in. If I'm going to grind 300 competitive level games to get on the Pro Tour, I would hope that those games would be improving my play in the format that the Pro Tour is in. I'm less excited about going to a modern PPTQ or regional PTQ if the format of the Pro Tour is standard. So standard is going to stay high and it's going to crash pretty hard when those cards rotate out. There is some hope here though. I don't believe this is the end of modern by any means. There's a lot of people who really enjoy modern. There are a lot of stores out there, smaller game stores to medium size and larger game stores that are putting their time and effort into promoting modern events. And as long as these events have reasonably high prize pools to them and are treated like competitive high level events, there'll be a large incentive 
for people to continue to play modern. Formats that are played have more value and have more interest from the community. These stores have a huge influence over how we're going to treat modern. Wizards of the Coast also can put modern in at high level events, including GPs. The more GPs that are modern focused, the better it is for the community and the better it is for the format. The World Magic Cup may become the premier yearly tournament. There was talk of increasing the prize fund at some point to half a million dollars. And if Team Unified is part of that for modern, which is basically just modern, it's up to each of your teammates have to have different decks. You're only allowed four of each card between your entire team. Then modern is going to be front and center for what could be the biggest tournament of the year. Additionally, Wizards has the opportunity to play with the banned list. A lot of people have talked about unbanning Jace or Bloodbraid Elf. I believe both of these are good ideas, especially Jace if he is being reprinted in a set. I wouldn't unban him without reprinting him because he'll shoot through the roof, but I don't think he's actually overpowered for the current modern environment. Additionally, we should look at other ways to tinker with modern. Paulo has a wonderful article where he tears apart modern pretty hard and has lots of suggestions, including unbanning the Thopter Sword combo and Ancestral Visions. But he also recommends the idea of a 20 card sideboard, which allows you more hate for some of the unfair decks out there. I like that idea. I would give it a try. A lot of people have also talked about returning Force of Will to modern magic, and I don't actually support that. I think the card is overpowered, but it is the style of card that stops crazy combos early. And I could see tinkering with Force of Will to make it a little bit less powerful, but still relevant to a modern environment. Maybe you pitch islands or basic islands instead of blue cards, or maybe there's some other downside to what you're doing. Force of Will allows the control player the opportunity to stop crazy combos, but at a card disadvantage. And although I don't want Modern to be the same as Legacy, I would like to see a card that has that concept in it. So I hope R&D takes a serious look at ways that they could rebalance Force of Will and change it for a modern environment. Whether things are going well or they're doom and gloom. Subscribe to the channel for the latest magic news, events, coverage, deck techs, and strategy. Thank you to everybody who's over there on Patreon supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate it. And until next time, choose the cards wisely.